<laughs> you ready? <laughs> Shit, are you ready? Damn. Yeah. All right, so like, try not to be talking to shit at your tables, or I'm gonna have to check some bitches. <laughs> and without further motherfucking ado, <laughs> let me bring up one real nigga. <laughs>
three you. <laughs> you guys know what my costume is? No. Drink in the Bernie's. I'm some douchebag I saw in the marina last week. <laughs> <laughs> you guys want to see my impression of a beta male? Am I right, you guys? Jeez. Oh, hey, you. The bottom 99% say that I don't feel their pain. I feel their pain. They don't feel my pain. I have terrible tennis elbow. I don't play tennis. I just have a real heavy watch. <laughs> The bottom, the 99%, that's one thing, but man, you know what I hate is the uh, bottom half of the top 1%, right? Classless millionaires. So it it does, doesn't sound right if that word doesn't have a B at the front of it, right? <laughs> millionaires, ugh. <laughs> Wait, you, you think I don't, you guys think I'm not relating to you? I can relate to you guys. like. Like sex. Sex is weird, am I right, ladies? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's weird with me. And I wouldn't have it any other way. Sex with me is weird like banana chips. Because it's not that great. But every couple of years, you try it again anyway. <laughs> Look, you guys don't even know it, but you need the top 1%. You love the top 1%. Because if you didn't have the top 1%, you wouldn't have Lady Gaga, Bruce Wayne, <laughs> Slumdog Millionaire. You love those guys, and you wouldn't have them anymore, and that's why you need the top 1%. This character is bombing. <laughs> I wonder what's wrong with doing a character that's generally contemptible. I wonder what the issue would be with that. Oh, probably none. I'll do it. Uh, <laughs> stop saying I look like Gilligan, alright? I don't look... I, this hat costs more than the Mission District. <laughs> alright? I mean, I like you guys, okay? I think I feel like we've we've grown we've grown close, you know? I mean, that's just what happens when you see somebody that's attractive. You you grow close to them. I feel like you guys are tight with me, like my black light tribal tattoo. Uh, uh, I like you guys just like the black light tribal tattoo because you're both mostly white. That's part of this character. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> It's a racist, and I personally disagree with it. <laughs> That's like a marina thing, I thought. <laughs> Look, I'm not going to go much longer than this, all right? <laughs> this is almost done. Uh, pretty much all I have is my closer, and it's awesome. You guys ready for my closer? Jesse Fernandez. <laughs> Jesse Fernandez, everyone, character number one. Keep track because you'll be voting. You have to vote for three of them. Hey, Catherine, I've got to tell you, I'll give you a one minute light, and it's a five minute set. So, hey, guys, are you ready for character number two? Woo! Yeah. Woo! All right, thanks for all that enthusiasm. Character number two, I'm going to say just quite a character. Give it up for Nicole Turley as Pitch Black. Hi. That's right, I'm never bringing it up tonight. Come on, you guys. Hi, how's it going? I know what you're thinking. Oh my god, a vampire fucked a gypsy pirate and the baby got shredded with shrapnel in the face. <laughs> that is exactly what happened. <laughs> Dude. It's been a sad week, you guys. Oh my god. You know why? 
Kim Kardashian's marriage is over. No, actually, she did better than most celebrities. Like, I think she beat Britney Spears by like nine months. Finally, I don't know why not. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Why can't why can't gays get married again? Uh, oh, because it would threaten the sanctity of marriage. Oh, that's why. Oh. Yeah. I fucking hate people. I know you can tell. No. So anyway, my name is Pitch Black. Rhymes with bitch attack. Mommy. <laughs> so no, it is actually my real name. My parents named me that because they hate me, and they wanted to adopt a black baby from Somalia or some shit. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm from Orange County. I know you can tell by my awesome tan. <laughs> you know, I didn't always look like this. I used to be hot and tan and then I ate Michael Jackson's corpse. <laughs> Tasted like white chocolate. <laughs> Too soon. I'm not, I'm not politically correct, you guys. Political correctness is a quality I despise. Like people. Oh, no, you know the great thing about looking like this? Uh, is that it prevents people from talking to me. <laughs> Except for this British dude on the bar that's all, hey, hey miss, you got some shit in your nose. <laughs> I'm like, oh, thank you. Oh, you know what? You got some shit in your nose too. Oh, wait, that's your face. <laughs> oh. And then there was this hippie fuck on Bart that's like, hey, vampire. Hey, shouldn't you be at home right now sleeping in your coffin? I'm like, dude, white guy with dreadlocks. Shouldn't you be at home right now in Berkeley jacking off in your mom's basement? <laughs> Excuse me for being pissed off. It's a comedy show. Pissed off is how I do enthusiasm. Uh, do you guys have hobbies? Besides hanging out in a bar getting drunk? So, you guys hate me, don't you? That's okay, most people do. So, I like to write poetry about death and do charcoal drawings. That's when I'm not chanting over a pentagram and sacrificing chickens. Anyway, when I'm not doing that, I work as a bartender in a tenderloin. You guys should come by because I have great people skills. <laughs> I'm the cure for your clinical depression. <laughs> you know what I hate? Who bartends here? Besides that guy. Oh, you do. Uh, does any ever come up to you and go, why don't you fucking smile? Turn that frown upside down. People do that to me all the time. Come on, smile, get happy. You look so much prettier if you'd smile. I'm like, dude, can I punch you in the nuts then? Because that would make me smile right now. <laughs> dude, why do we do that? Tell people to smile when they feel like shit, you know? You know what, you guys? This is a public service announcement, you know? I frown because that's rewarding. I'm pissed off all the time, I'm probably gonna fuck you up. And don't you wanna know that, you know? I mean, why do you think when people are on the news and somebody, like, you know, kills a bunch of people and all their friends are like, oh my god, he had no idea he was about to snap. Maybe that's because you told him to fucking smile all the time. Frowning saves lives. <laughs> oh, this is a comedy show, I should tell some jokes. Hey, uh, here's a joke. Hey, I believe that nothing is impossible, but some things are highly unlikely like Amish gang rape. <laughs> or a baby shower for an aborted fetus. <laughs> or the Raiders ever winning another Super Bowl. Oh, yeah. <laughs> anyway. All right, you guys, I've been Pitch Black, and this is Ben. <laughs> Number two, Pitch Black, everyone. Let's keep this going with uh, number three. Please welcome to the stage, Wilmer. A little more enthusiasm, Wilmer. Wowee, thank you so much. San Francisco, California. Wow, what a treat. What a treat. I'll tell you what, this city, it's amazing. Y'all must have like 13 Walgreens. <laughs> I haven't visited.
visited all of them yet, but I intend to. My gosh, we only got like one back where I'm from, in Alameda. <laughs> I tell you, this is this place is crazy. I went to the Starbucks. I said to them, I was like, things here, they're a little different. You know, I said, I was like, well, I'll take a, a grande caramel macchiato over ice, please. And they said, you want two shots? I said, three shots? Only in San Francisco. <laughs> Jeez Louise. <laughs> I'll tell you this, I went to get my mother uh Went and get her a little souvenir. I got her a $25 gift card of Whole Foods. Cost me $50, but it was well worth it. <laughs> Tell you, we don't have Whole Foods where I'm from. In Alameda, California. <laughs> It's a pleasure to be here. I'll tell you this. You guys are a little open around here. You got Castro. This is wonderful. You got a gay district. You don't got that where I'm from. People so homophobic where I'm from, they won't even blow their own nose. It's terrible. No one allowed to be themselves. Y'all got a lot of people camping out here. Just don't notice that. A lot of people just sleeping under the stars. <laughs> but they can't see the stars. That's called light pollution. It's a real thing. <laughs> I remember my father, he recently bought a second home. Put a trailer in the backyard. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pleasure to be here. How are you two doing? I love your hat, sir. I do indeed. What's your name? Neil. Neil? And yours? Michelle Obama. Word better if your name was Neil and your name was Bend Over. That would have been perfectly match better, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, it would have been sexual innuendo if you know what I'm talking about. I visited Bubba Gum Shrimp Company. That's where I got my souvenir hat here. I went in and said to the waiter, hey, what would you recommend? He told me to leave. So get the fuck out. You got no shoes on. The stores of here are real sticky, by the way. I noticed that when I was walking around. Hey, I got a question for y'all. How many, how many rednecks kick screw the light bulb? How many? Whatever this is. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's four. That's the answer. Thank y'all very much. I'm in Wilbur. Mother, 12-foot radioactive head. <laughs> Daddy was a chubby chaser. You know what I'm saying? Growing up, not easy for me. High school was tough. I fell in with a bad crowd. I don't think they really valued me for who I was. They just wanted me around to shit in their pot plants and grow a better weed. <laughs> Nitrates, people. <laughs> Nitrates. Been unemployed for a little while. Didn't do like all the fashionable people. Didn't get laid off. Nope, I quit. I called my boss a cloaca and I gave him the feather. I'm out of here. <laughs> Unemployment doesn't suit me. I had to find something to do with myself, so I thought it was time to chase my dream. I, I got up off the couch. Brush the, the grubs and the frosting off my waddle. <laughs> and here I am performing stand up comedy. Yeah, thank you very much, everybody. <laughs> I think my biggest motivation has been the poor quality of chicken jokes written and performed throughout the years. They're terrible. We've all heard them, right? They're awful. Right? Yeah. Why did the chicken cross the road? To get to the other side. Ha 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 ha. So funny, so funny. The first time I heard that, I laughed so hard I fell out of my shell. <laughs> <laughs> you got a kid that laughs at that joke? Have that kid tested for autism. <laughs> <laughs> 
Why did the turkey cross the road? To prove he wasn't a chicken. A turkey should be so lucky. Have you seen their necks? They look like pussies. Pussy necks. Pussy neck turkeys. <laughs> what happened to the chicken that ate some eggs? She laid a sidewalk. Yeah. You know what really happened to the hen that laid sidewalk? I remember, I forgot the part of the joke that I wrote, but then I'll tell you, she freezes in place until somebody just paints a sundress on her, sticks her on a shelf of Ross, and waits for her to waste away in the home of some hoarder. <laughs> Chicken. <laughs> what do you get when you cross a chicken with a goose? You get a bird that lays down. Yeah, and you get a rape victim. That's what you get. What happens when a chicken lays an egg on a barn? You get an egg roll. Yes, and a grieving mother. Actually, but I guess her sorrow's not as funny as your racism. Well, everybody, it's been a true pleasure. Before I get out of here, I'll tell you that I'm certainly glad Halloween is over. It's tough for a person who looks like me all year round. People keep asking me, why didn't you dress up like a sexy chicken? Why aren't you a sexy chicken? That is deeply insulting and misogynistic. What makes a chicken sexy is what's on the inside. Juicy meat, perfect for a cock. I'm Chicken Gill. <laughs> chicken Gill, everyone, contestant number four. That's pretty amazing. Keep in mind, uh, only the regular working comics to just put together a little five minute act in the spirit of Halloween, the day after Halloween. Uh, so you ready for your next contestant? Contestant number five? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, keep it going for this next contestant. That is quite a character. Give it, give it, I'm like out of beer and I can't speak right now. <laughs> give it going for the wolf.
cute little thing. I'll snatch him right up. <laughs> tell him well, he's gonna be the boy screaming wolf later. Let me tell you, Anderson. <laughs> and they had just adopted this little boy from Kenya. And uh, he comes up to me, and you know these little kids, they don't respect their elders these days. He comes up to me and he's like, Well, let me tell you a joke. And I'm like, okay. And he's like, your mama so fat. And I said, well, how fat is she? She's so fat. When she run out of tampons, she got a substitute sheep. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, anyway, this is about the <laughs> But, you know, I used to drink a lot when I was younger, back in my teen days. I represented and represented the night. Actually, I was at uh, Michael, Michael uh, J. Fox. He had a garage sale down in L.A. when I was there. He said some earthquake, and he was trying to like raise money to uh, pay for the damage to his house. But I don't think he felt the earthquake for some reason. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Note to self. Write more, write more jokes about disabled people. <laughs> oh, anyway, so I got the jacket and everything. I got it going on. But I've been sad. I've been drinking a lot lately because my girlfriend, Little Red Riding Hood, she broke up with me. And uh, I've been caught down in the dumps. And so uh, I wrote a little song about it. Uh, it goes a little something like this. Put the music, DJ. Look at the number! <laughs> so, 
I drive a Hummer, right? My parents got it for me for my birthday, and they're like, "You, I hope you appreciate that Hummer. I'm like, fuck you, you're just jealous because your parents didn't buy you a Hummer, you dick. So I went to the Taco Bell drive-thru, and I'm like, I'll have the Southwest Chicken Double Western Fiesta Meridian Navigational Burger, and they're like, you don't have that, this is Taco Bell. I'm like, fuck you, see this Hummer? You should have let me win in the Star Wars Monopoly game 10 years ago, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> so I like to, you know, I think like I just started doing comedy. I like to do comedy, like to express myself because I like uh, ideas and shit. You know, my friends are here supporting me. Like, shut up, Michael. Fuck you. <laughs> so, uh, guys, have you, have you ever taken a shit? Come on, no one's gonna back me up on that. You ever? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about, man. Shit. I got like expressing myself. So like people are like bitching about the economy and shit. I'm just like, just click more pop up ads. Be, do something productive, support the economy. What are you doing? Protest Occupy Wells Fargo? Fuck you! 1% fuck you! 99% fuck you! 120%! Yeah! <laughs> so, uh, they should make like a porno based on Jurassic Park. Cause then they could call it Jurassic Fuck. Am I right? <laughs> Have you ever heard that song, Brass Monkey? That song changed my life. <laughs> my dick is so long. How long is it? Why do you want to know how long my dick is? Are you kidding? <laughs> no, but for real. My dick is so long. I need to be in a long distance relationship just to get laid. Oh. Uh. <laughs> so I was at Barnes and Noble the other day, you know, and I was thinking like, dude, I'm from Walnut Creek, right? And people are always like, you're from San Francisco? What are you, gay? I hate it when that happens. So, uh, <laughs> you know, and scene one, act two of Big Beth, when the porter says, you may roast your goose here, what he means is you can stick your thumb up your butt. For real. <laughs> Smoke weed every day, yeah! Right. Snakes are gay and shit, cause like, they're just, snakes are just dicks with legs, like if they had their legs chopped off, you know what I'm saying? Snakes here through vibrations in the ground, I got this subwoofer on my, I'm like blasting that shit, fuck those snakes, man. I'm gonna take a snake, and then I'm gonna fuck that snake, I'm gonna cut the snake's head off, I'm gonna cut the head of my dick off, I'm gonna drop that snake head onto my dick, I'm gonna fuck the neck hole where the snake's head is to be. Fuck yeah! That. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, um, anyone here, have you ever eaten an entire tub of Nickelodeon Gat with your dick? <laughs> yeah! So I'm like, if that sticker is a hologram, how come I can touch it? Uh, <laughs> Alright, fuck you guys. Fuck you, Michael, shut the fuck up! Yeah, uh, Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> Did you get it? <laughs> no, don't take that call. Don't fucking take it. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> so what do I have to do for $75? <laughs> oh, sorry. That's probably important. Hi, Mom? Yeah, it's me. I know it's... It's late here too, Mom. It's fucking late here too, okay? I called you earlier because I wanted to... I, I just wanted to tell you. I'm sorry. I brought him to the house and chat Scruffy. <laughs> I thought he was a cop. Why do you always say that? I'm totally fucking clean. Tell her! Tell her! Tell her! Right? He's clean. He's fucking clean. What? No? Well... <laughs> okay, well, how's that? <laughs> Sorry. Well, how about the funeral? Did he, did he send me the check? Because I really need that check. Well, no, I love you and you don't love me. Fuck it. So, what else do you with the $75? Wait, I got another call. Honey, I know that wasn't your fucking... I know that wasn't for you because you stole that fucking cell phone yesterday. I need that. What? Hello? Did you get it? it you got it. Awesome. She got it. You fucking had it. It's so fucking cool. Look, um, come over to Harvey's. I'll be, no, I'll just, just take a cab, I don't know, fucking, I don't even money, just fucking blow him, just get over here. Okay, I, I love you. I gotta go. I'll talk to you later. Do I get, when do I get this money? You're not gonna give me the money, I'm not Okay, this is fucking bullshit. I could have been across the street. Never mind. Um, okay, I gotta go. I love you. Hey, guys, everyone. Yeah, Sebastian, let's keep it going. We'll get to the number eight. She is quite a character. Melanie O'Brien is Melly the Jelly.
because you're going to do it too badly. Uh, but, <laughs> so what we were going to do is we're going to go in for it, but we're not going to touch, and then we're just going to go shh, 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 shh. Ready? Okay, ready? <laughs> Thanks, you can sit down. <laughs> Um, I was going to make a joke that was going to sound something like a jellyfish is like an octopus's gay son. And then I thought it sounded bad. Uh, <laughs> damn. I think, and then I was going to make a joke about KY jelly. And I was like, hey, why do you got to use jelly on your vagina? And then I was, all right, I'm ending it there because it's been so much better than it was going to be. All right. Yeah, girl, I'm on the bus. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? Where's your motherfucking money, bitch? I told you. I Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> this bitch hung up on me. Hold on. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I told you I get what the fuck you looking at? Can't nobody talk on the phone without no crazy bitch looking at them all crazy and shit. <laughs> shit. Excuse you, bitch. Shit. Hello. <laughs> yeah, girl, I'm on the bus. <laughs> yeah, girl, they got a stinky ass nigga shitting in his pants. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Getro shit. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> bitch, you need to get a new phone, bitch. <laughs> That's why you cheap ass bitch. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Girl, I'm coming from the fair building. <laughs> right? I was down by that Occupy shit. That's some bullshit, bitch. <laughs> No, girl, I was like, you know what you need to occupy? You need to occupy a motherfucking shower. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> How about your hippie ass occupy the deodorant aisle at Walgreens? That's what the fuck I'm talking about, bitch, right? Hello? <laughs> Shit, fucking get you <laughs> What the fuck you looking at? Shit. <laughs> Hello! <laughs> yeah, girl, this motherfucker asked me for spare change and shit. Like I got some spare. Hello! <laughs> Hello! <laughs> shit! Oh, okay, bitch, you just tripping. All right, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, so girl, I was I was walking down Hay Street, right? And this motherfucker asked me for some motherfucking spare change. Nigga, I ain't got no change. Give me some motherfucking change. How about you call them some change out of your motherfucking white boy dress looking like shit and shit? Hello? Hello? This bitch needs to get a new frog. What the fuck you looking at? Really? Y'all putting too much on it, shit. Can't nobody talk on the motherfucker. You never seen a black woman talk on the phone and shit? Shit. I know this motherfucker isn't gonna get on the bus and sit next to me. You better not sit next to me. No, you bet. <laughs> yeah, girl, this nigga tried to sit next to me. Some white boy talking about did you get the heroin? What the fuck you talking about? <laughs> Shit. Sit over there. Sit over there. Shit. I'm not gonna say it again. Did I hit the light? No. Okay. Shit, I better not get the motherfucker. What the fuck are you looking at? Really though, this 
Britney Spears ass bitch looking at me all crazy and shit. Hello? <laughs> bitch, you are tripping. I told you I get my check next week. I gotta get my weave did. I gotta get my weave did, bitch. I give you your check next week. Hello? <laughs> bitch, I gotta go. Yeah, I gotta get off this motherfucking bus and go get a, to the cannabis store and shit. <laughs> Hold on. Really though? Really though? That's real motherfucker. You know what, bitch? I'm gonna go. Cause I can't even deal with your ass anymore. Shit. Hello? <laughs> You know what the worst part about looking at this? I walked out to my car and people looked at me weird. This is the weirdest thing you've ever seen in the Castro, seriously? <laughs> seriously? Caitlin, I mean, chicken, um, I wrote a joke for you. Uh, this is awesome. Why did the chicken cross the road? Everybody knows that joke to get to their side. Why did the chicken cross the road in Castro? Same, same, same result. Why does a man cross the road in the Castro? Because his dick was stuck in the chicken. <laughs> That's the worst thing you've heard here, seriously? <laughs> I, um... I actually, uh, I actually do a, uh, uh, a cross-dressing version of Axl Rose. <laughs> I'm the only one in the United States. I think there's several in Brazil and some in the Philippines that do that. Um, so yeah. My middle name is Splashes, I just want to let you know that. Uh, that's well, that's a nickname I got because I'm a real lady and I, I sit down when I pee. And that's what happens with my balls. Splashes! <laughs> uh, I like all kinds of porn. Anybody like porn? Yeah. I love, I love multicultural porn. The, the Latina porn. You know the Latino porn, you know what I'm talking about? Where they're always asking for guac? Guac, guac, guac. <laughs> oh, God. Did you know taking two dicks and legs is actually called skiing? When you have a go. That's, that's called skiing. My friends always look at me weird when I tell them I'm going to Bear Valley to go skiing. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Nah. <laughs> I like that one. I, uh, now I tee back the toilet every time I sit down, it's awesome. <laughs> Sorry, I got a cheat here. Woo! Perfect time for an Oscar, that wasn't too many anything. Uh, that's a half an image. Oh. Um, I don't know if you ladies know this or not, but um, I was reading Cosmo and it said a real woman, well, like if she's going out to have sex, well, well if she's planning on having sex, we'll shave her legs. Is that true? Because I just want to prove something for you. Feel my leg. That's not shaved, is it? Feel that one. You're feeling the wrong leg. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get the real thank you. Uh, oh, uh, I got to tell you this. This is a. This I actually I'm gonna make a T-shirt out of this because I think it would sell very well. Um, I came up with a new term for that. I mean a new definition for it. It's not a new term, but you know, it's very. Um, the, t the definition I came up for it is it's like NASA. Fag stands for fucking absolutely gorgeous. I guess that's not gonna sell here. How about some more guac? Nothing? Okay. Um, I love wearing a dress because it's a lot easier to pee. Nothing? Okay. 
Thank you guys very much. I appreciate your time. Take care of yourselves. Let me just leave with this little notion here. 
1964, I was on the Ed Sullivan Show. I opened up for a mopped hair quartet of kids from Liverpool, England. They are no longer together. I'm still on the fucking road doing what I do. I think that says something. How about you guys together for me? Hey, I'm not Sal Lieberman. You guys have been amazing. Let's bring up your host here. This guy. Right here, the little mustache guy. How you doing? All right, thank you, Sal Lieberman. Shaking the pumpkinos, everyone. And that's the number 11. Let me give you a quick, 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 quick rundown of who can catch this more, and then you get to vote. You need to vote for three people. If you don't vote for three people, then, uh, Guess what? Your vote doesn't count. Hey, do you guys have a paper? Here you go, here's a piece of paper. I'll find you a pen in a moment. This is fun, I feel like Oprah. Okay, you guys, the question number one was Jesse Fernandez. Number two, Nicole Turley as Pitch Black. Number three, Miles K as Wilbur. Number four, Chicken Gill. Number five, The Wolf. Number six, Char Char. Number seven, Sebastian. Number eight, Melly to Jelly, number nine, Ja Queen, number ten, Rose Hollywood, and number eleven, Sal Lieberman. So make sure you vote for three people and then put them in this hat. I'll quickly come around and get them, but I also have to tally up the vote, so you have to get it in within the next minute. Put your top three in the winner wins seventy-five dollars. Are you ready now? We're gonna have a special performer. Special performer ready? Um, I'm counting my, let me get my shoes on. Okay, special performer has to get her shoes on, everybody. <laughs> but yeah, I'm ready. Okay. How are you guys doing? How many of you knew that this was going to happen tonight? <laughs> yeah? But do you knew? But do you knew when you guys just came in? This is the worst spot at all because they're all voting right now. I'm going to try to do material. Uh, please give it up for your uh, <laughs> feature <laughs> act. <laughs> While we collect the ballots and announce the winners, the one, the only, the funny, she's been around, she's not too drunk tonight, that's amazing, give it up for Pippi Love Stocking, make some noise! Thank you, Rob, thank you. Yes, I know, Rob. I'm not too drunk tonight, I can't believe it myself. It's post Halloween, it's the day, the day after Halloween. It's my favorite time of year because that's when there's a lot of people's uh, things left out on the sidewalk, you know. Left, I got these shoes just to... I was out last night in drag in Berkeley and um, a girl asked me what my costume was. And I was a little bit surprised by that because, you know, I was just, just a drag queen. But then I thought, well, I guess I could tell her I'm one of the Osama Bin Laden widows. This is just what we wear underneath all the sheets. <laughs> Liberation! Uh, like, actually, I could be a fag hag. I need a lunchbox. And... <laughs> a moment of silence. Did, I enjoyed the show tonight. Did you guys like that? As, I don't want to. Uh, to give you any, uh, I don't want to influence your votes. I mean, we all tallied our votes and we had our things. And I admire all comedians who get up here and do their thing because it's not easy to just stand up and be judged and try to be funny. And, People aren't really in the mood. People are kind of hungover. There's a lot going on in the world with the Occupy, whatever. <laughs> Occupy San Francisco, Oakland, all that stuff. I'm not really a very political person. I just really want to get laid. <laughs> <laughs> and you think they're having sex in those ten cities? They don't have showers, but I'll check it out later. <laughs> I live in the Tenderloin. Have you guys ever been there? It's, it's, it's a nice neighborhood. It's a lot different than the Castro. And uh, we like to kick ass there. We party a lot. And uh, it's funny how you adjust accordingly. I have a tenderloin earthquake preparedness kit. And that consists of three vials of crack and a brick. Because uh, when the big one hits, we're going to eat in square. There you go, bitch. A tabla and Gucci, and <laughs> invest in a wheelbarrow. <laughs> Sometimes people ask me what is wrong with me, and uh, what, what's the deal? Am I transgender? Or do I want to cut it off or whatever? Like, no, 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 no. I want to keep my penis. It has paid for itself so, more than once. No, seriously, I have a really nice penis. Google me later. And I get a lot of compliments on it, and sometimes it does get awkward. It's embarrassing. I was on the bus getting ready for tonight, 
And um, <laughs> this lady, wow, we have such a nice piece. Can, can I have my picture taken with it? And I said, now listen, madam, I'm not here for all that nonsense. I'm just hanging out. <laughs> That's a thinking man's joke. Worked hard on that one. <laughs> We have a lot of prostitutes walking around in the Tenderloin. Now, actually, we, 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 our, our prostitutes are specifically called hookers because of the hooks. I paid 50 bucks for that joke. Thank you. They have hooks. You get it? No, I guess not. Bring back the jellyfish. I want to steal that act. Straight girl. I, she's a lovely straight girl. I'm not, I'm not trying to influence your gender. But, you know, I, I am not a straight person. I'm not I'm a gay man, but I do try to find that common ground that it slips away from, you know, straight girl, sexually active, you're out there, you got yourself an IUD. I am not a straight girl, sexually active, I got a DUI. So, we do, we look, we look for common ground. <laughs> Actually, when I'm not dressed up in drag, uh, I would be classified as a bear. That's what they call us when we're, you're big boned. <laughs> Eat a lot. Don't care about your appearance. <laughs> <laughs> and the gay community has been so nice, they were really making an effort to uh, return us to our natural habitats. Uh, lure us onto buses with promises of Pancakes and beer bashes. <laughs> I've been up to Gurnville. You ever been up to Gurnville? <laughs> North of here? Teeth are optional. Well, actually, they are. Oh, you go. You should go to the meth lab tours. <laughs> you're, you're just north of wine country. After a long day of wine tasting, go check out the meth labs. You'd be amazed. Uh, try some peanut butter crank. Oh, it spreads like... <laughs> no, that obviously I haven't been doing any meth lately. It makes me nervous. <laughs> but I was, I was dating another bear. I was involved with a bear. Bears on bears. Uh, this guy, there he is now. Uh, uh, <laughs> well, uh, he, th this bear, he actually turned out to be bipolar. Oh. <laughs> and yeah, you know what? But so I, I actually liked the, I sort of liked the quiet times. It was nice. But he had, he had a number of problems. One, uh, he was also an amputee. Yeah, he had a wooden leg. Some of my girlfriends said to me. Uh, what are you? What do you see in this guy? And I had to admit that I was stumped. Uh, <laughs> Oprah likes that. Actually. But uh, anyway, he did have a wooden leg, and he wanted to marry me. God, I was like, so here I am, engaged to a guy with a wooden leg, but I ended up breaking it off. Oh. We, uh, <laughs> I love those groans. It reminds me of home. Uh, I broke it off with him because he was too kinky for me. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not a prude. I'm open-minded. But he wanted to try some kinky sexual shit. He, he wanted to give me a red wine enema. And not, not the best idea, really. But I let him go ahead and do it. You know, and it, the gerbils got so drunk. We <laughs> just got a new carpet. <laughs> Does anybody eat at Soup Freaks? They put ground glass and nails in your soup. They're freaks. <laughs> I just thought I read there used to be a photo lab over there. Why is it called Soup Freaks? I don't know. I mean, I, 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 something tells me that it's Asian. And, and I'll tell you why. Because there's no such thing as a happy donut. <laughs> Those donuts were fried and covered in sugar. They're not happy. And they're not lucky either. If you really check your cholesterol. <laughs> what am I going to do for the rest of this? Uh, have, you, have you found the, the winner yet? Has the, has the wiener been announced? Three more minutes. Two more minutes. Three more minutes. Feels like a lifetime. So, and, so has anybody had terminal illness recently? <laughs> <laughs> was her name. Oh, okay. Princess Bunny. Well, I, 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 mentioned, I did discuss my trip to Grunville. Um, I, I go up there a lot. And I went up there one weekend, 
and I took my dog Dolly along with me. Now Dolly is a rescue. She's uh, like a pit bull mix, and you know they're misunderstood. They're not violent unless you um, teach them how to <laughs> how to fight or whatever. But anyway, she's fine. She's just a handful. She's full of life. And I took her up to uh, Russian River with me one weekend, parked my car um, down at the bottom of the trail, and I, we walked up the trail to our cabin that we had for the weekend. And while I was going up the trail with Dolly, um, this country woman, like uh, Grandma Clampett, came out from the woods with a shotgun, <laughs> and she said, where are you going with that dog? That dog's going to kill my rabbit. And I was very sad. I said, I don't know what you're talking about, man. My dog is not. A, a hunting dog or anything. But I've got a prize winning rabbit here. Her name's Princess Bunny. <laughs> Apparently, this this rabbit, there are tours um, on the state fair. This Princess Bunny had won blue ribbons at state fairs all around California, the hot spots, Lodi and Gilroy. And, um, <laughs> she had had a career. She was retired now, living in Guerneville, living out her golden years. <laughs> and then here I come along with my dog, and she's afraid that the dog's going to kill the rabbit. I said, don't worry, dog won't kill the rabbit. We're just here for the weekend. Well, you mind your business, I won't mind ours. I go up to the cabin. Dolly gets in the, the backyard. It's all fenced in. Everything's cool. Then I go out on the town to, you know, spread the love, sing some karaoke, uh, support the economy, have a few cocktails and other things. And it turns out, like, the next morning, I... I ended up having a, a bender of a night. It was like 6 a.m. I come back, sun's up, get to my front door of the cabin. What do I find on the, on the front doorstep? It's the filth-covered dead body of Princess Bunny, the prize running rabbit. I think, oh shit, I'm in trouble now. I've got to do something. I bring the dead bunny into the house, rinse her off in the sink, washed her down with my Crabtree and Evelyn since a Persia soap. <laughs> I put the blow dryer on her and she fluffed up beautifully. She could have gone back on the road. <laughs> Sacramento. You don't have to move much there. And, <laughs> I'm just belching from all that red bull. And then I, I, went, I took her back to the cage where she had, must have come from. And I put her back in her cage so it's, like, it's not on me now. And then uh, a few minutes later, I hear a blood curdling scream coming from the hillbilly woman's house down on the trail below, and she's found the dead rabbit. I came outside and I said, Oh my god, madam, I heard you scream. What's going on down here? She said, Princess Bunny died yesterday, and we buried her in the backyard. Now she's back in her cage. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was a long journey, wasn't it? <laughs> are there any comedian writers in the audience? I think we're about to announce our winner, aren't we? Are you guys ready? Are you excited? Yeah! Alex, when you, uh, if your name gets called, please come up here and join me. Give me a little drum roll for third place, please. Coming in third place! Chicken Gill, everyone! Chicken Gill! Wherever Chicken Gill is, Chicken Gill will go with the Harvey's t-shirt! <laughs> Char Char tonight, Jesse Elias. He won at Sir Waddingsworth. Now, are you ready for your third annual winner? Give me a drum roll, please! <laughs> Not only was this person the judge's favorite, but she was also the audience's favorite. Give it up for Melly the
local specials, so come check it out next week at 9. I'm Ron Bob.